investor. investor. To my dream. To so my dream. dream. So treat your investor well. Just shift your energy. When I, when I shift the energy that I had a job holding me back from serving the planet to, oh, this is my investor investing in my breathtaking future, oh, I felt much better about getting up on Monday morning, right? But you have to use the investor for what's right. You have to use the investor to really invest in your dream. So number one, uh, the label that I give someone who has a corporate job and they have a dream, you are a, and repeat after me when I say this, a parallel preneur. That's some good stuff. That's huh? right. <laughs> Work the right y'all don't, mission already. Y'all right? don't know what y'all can get in the hallway well, if you're in the right place. That's, right. Right. But that's why I can't be loud because then everybody else gonna come out here. I'm gonna get in trouble. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which, which always tell me, Lisa, you got the ability to shut my whole conference down if you want to. Uh -huh. So this is just a secret right here from yeah. the secret lady. <laughs> okay. That was, so, 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 so well, one, it's your investor. Yeah. Um, two, uh, you're a parallel preneur. Three. You want to write your business a check every time you get paid. So the investor is not just paying you, it's paying your business. So write your, I wrote myself a check every two weeks for three and a half years. I wrote myself a check every, every two weeks. Just like I wrote the light bill, just like I wrote the rent, I wrote the business a check. And in the memo line, because I didn't even know the name of my business at the time, I just put funding my dream. And I wrote a check and I didn't open the, I didn't open the uh, statements. Because then, like my mama used to say, money would burn her pocket. I didn't know what that meant, so I don't want it to burn my pocket. So I said, if I don't know what I have, mm -hmm. I won't spend it. So I just kept stacks of, of statements for three and a half years. And I walked into the bank not knowing what my balance was. Because mm -hmm. my investor kept writing a check. And I write about this in, in, in this book. This mm -hmm. is, it's in Chapter 5. Um, I walked into the bank, and I asked them. I said, my name is Lisa Nichols. They're like, are you the funding my dream lady? Because I would write funding my dream in the memo line and mail the check in. Mm -hmm. And for three years, they've been looking at this check coming in twice a month from this woman saying, funding my dream. And they said, what's your dream, Miss Nichols, the bank teller? And I said, I'm still getting clear on it, but whatever it is, it's going to cost me some money and I got the money to pay for it. <laughs> and I said, what's my, ba what's my balance? And by, at this time, I never had $3,000 in the bank, right? This was 94. I was, I was just getting off government's assistance, 96 about, maybe 96, 97. And she said, Miss Nichols, you have $62,000 in the bank. Yeah. And I said, no, my social security number, <laughs> you ain't getting me in trouble. I ain't spending that money. Mm -hmm. And she said, no, you have 62000 because I got a second job. And I put all the money from the second job in the bank because I just wanted to keep, I got excited about this, this thing called funding my dream. So you can be radical. The fact that you have a corporate job is not a, it's not a hindrance. It's not a holding back. It literally is the pathway to more freedom because you get to buy your freedom. Yeah. I, I, it's a shift. Yeah, I'm here. It's a shift. It's a shift. You yeah. get to buy your freedom, and now you have someone funding your freedom. So we think as entrepreneurs, if we take the leap, and we leap of faith, I, I quit my job, and uh, now you don't get a, a, a prize for being a dedicated entrepreneur because you're now broke, uh, and you have six months of savings in the bank. So now there's an urgency. Now you're worried about your livelihood. You cannot be creative hungry. You can't be creative in the dark. You have to be fiscally responsible for your life. What does that look like? So you're not giving up on entrepreneurship. You're not failing because you go back and get a job. You're being fiscally responsible for your life so you can be creative. You guys get that? Yes. 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 Okay. Don't say yes just loud. Like in there, I want you to say it loud, but I'm here. <laughs> How do you motivate so, your this employees? This is unauthorized right now, you guys. And they know when I come, I am so about five minutes. Five minutes. How do you motivate your employees? That means I'm gonna move in seven because I'm the boss of me. Okay. Motivate your employees. Okay. So how do you motivate your employees? Okay. Right. So how do you motivate? How many of you guys have team? And you need to motivate team. Okay, so I'll spend a few minutes on motivating team. So number one, you need to give team more. Honor them as leaders. So treat every team member as if they own their line of business. So you might own the business, but your team owns their line of business. So honor them as the business owner of that line of business. So number one, get them to buy in on your vision. This is partners and anyone that you bring on board. They have to buy in on the vision. So you can't dictate the vision. you got to allow them to co-create the vision with you. So co-create the vision, co-create the ownership, co-create the process. You gotta surrender some of your power and some of your strength and some of your leadership, but they'll rise to an occasion as well. If you want them to lead when you're away, they need to lead when you're there. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. I have a phenomenal team because my team will own the business with me sitting at the table. They will own their line of business. So when I leave, I don't worry about them owning the line of business. So you have to make sure that you're operating from a co-creative place. People support what they help to create. You cannot ask a leader to follow you and then ask them to lead later. Right, right, right. Let a leader lead, and then let them keep leading when you, when you leave. Let them make mistakes. I tell my team all the time, listen, we get to have breakdowns. 
You can have as many breakdowns as you need. Just don't have the same breakdown twice. <laughs> it's real easy. So my team knows it's safe to have breakdowns. It's safe to miss the miss the mark as long as we just miss it in that way one time. Then move on to another right. day. Right. We're gonna get a lot of lessons. Let's just get them one at a time. Does that make sense, you guys? Perfect. 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 Yeah. Thank you. Good stuff. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Right here. Okay. Right here, and then here, and then one of the guys, because the women will dominate the conversation. <laughs> um, Okay. Okay. Nice and long so that you're looking at. Sure. Can you speak about strategic partnerships, how you select them, what yes. you choose? You've done some amazing things, especially with a lot of people that don't look like us. And yes. I want to know how you you know, right. decide how right. to select. Right. Decide. So right. the number one thing, so, so we, we have people beating down our doors to partner with us. And the reason being because we've learned how to bring value. So the number one thing is look for how you can bring value to the marketplace. Right. Because people will, people will look at your track record. So, so don't look at who's playing with you or how do you play with someone. Look at how can you penetrate the market. People ask me, how did you get into the secret? I said I was doing the work. I was doing powerfully enough for the secret to call me. They said, how did you get on Oprah? Well, I was powerful enough in the secret for Oprah to call me. How did you get on Larry King? I was powerful enough on Oprah for Larry to call me. Does that make sense? Yeah. So every moment is an opportunity for the next moment. What I have done masterfully is I've leveraged one opportunity to make, a, to make four or five. That's I'm leveraged mama because I don't know when I'm going to get another chance. Right? So I'm leveraged. So how do, you, um, how do you find the people that you want to partner with and then how can you bring value to them? Or how can you show them your value? Your job, you are a storyteller. Say, I'm a storyteller. I'm a storyteller. My job, My job is to tell the most powerful story is to tell the most powerful story while I'm in action. While I'm in action. All the time. All the time. Love it. <laughs> so if you want to know how have I raised $2.3 million in my business, I first produce results and then I know how to tell the story of what I did. Yes. So we have a program called World Class Speakers Alliance. And I created this program because people kept asking, I kept having these kind of conversations. And it always comes down to the same thing, how do you speak? Every single one of you are speakers. You may not be a platform speaker, but if you are a business owner or you want to own a business, you are a speaker. Period. You just don't get to, I don't like speaking, well it ain't about you. <laughs> like, get over you, pull up your big girl pants, pull up your big boy pants. If you want to do, be a business owner, yes. you want to grow your dream, you have to become everything you need to be to do it, right? Mm -hmm. You are the storyteller. If you want to sell your business, I now work on Wall Street with investors. The first thing they say is, so tell me your story. <laughs> I guess the same thing, mm -hmm. same hustle I was doing in 1996, mm -hmm. the exact same thing. It's just a bigger game and a couple extra zeros. Right. And that's yeah. it. That's the only thing that's changed. It's just a couple right. extra zeros. So you want to learn how to tell your story. So um, I, I, I prayed and prayed that, God, how can I help people? Because there's so much that you need to master to tell a powerful story. There's a reason why you saw the room and they're going, mm. And then they go, yes, yes. And then they nod. And then they, you saw all the stuff that I had, so wasn't that an interactive room? Mm -hmm. right. Like you were a part of my conversation with me, right? Yes, I yes. took you on a journey, I took you on my dip, I showed you the dark part, I showed you the, then I brought you back up, then I, I gave you a challenge. That's all by design. And you can do that as well. She's touching me, that means yes, she wants me to leave. Oh, we gotta leave. Oh, okay. We gotta call. Okay, where we go? We in trouble okay. here. We all are in trouble. So listen, those of you that didn't get to ask your question, come down to the expo. We yes. want to coach you. So we can sign you up for coaching yes, sessions. Yes, but I got to okay? move because I, I always... Been. I define living your dreams and creating abundance now. Don't wait till later. What better time than now?